All right, welcome to How to Increase App Retention in 2017, and thanks so much for joining today's webinar. We are very excited that so many of you were able to join today, and uh, my name is Jay Hinman. I lead marketing at Numob, and so for the next 45 minutes, we're going to be talking all things retention, um, offering lessons in what actually works to help you, the brands, the app owners, the developers that are in attendance, to combat mobile app churn and to boost your app retention rates. And so we'll have time at the end of this presentation for your questions, and the session is also being recorded today, just in case you'd like to watch it again later. So to get started today, let's just look at some numbers from a very new study that was put together by Apps Flyer on mobile app retention. Um, unfortunately, retaining app users and keeping them active in our apps continues to be a major challenge for us all. Only 10 to 12 percent of apps that are downloaded actually have active users seven days later. And this plummets to 4 to 5 percent after 30 days. Ouch. Um, these users who are retained are defined, uh, the, the, the ones that are actually retained are defined as having been active within the app, you know, actually doing things. Not simply having it on their device, but doing nothing with it. That said, the good news is that year-over-year -year retention rates are up, so it was actually worse recently. <laughs> this means that it was worse last year and we're getting better at figuring out how to engage and keep the users we've worked so hard to acquire. As Apps Flyer says, the improvement clearly demonstrates that marketers understand the importance of retention and have doubled down on their optimization efforts. That's really what we're, we're here to talk about today. So let's talk about how to keep that momentum going. So today's speakers come to us from LeanPlum, Apptentive, and Numob. And we're going to kick things off with Lauren Wenland from LeanPlum. She is the Senior Director of Customer Success at LeanPlum. And she's going to be showing us six gifts that explain how to ex increase app retention. Uh, Lauren will be followed by Red Rusick from Apptentive. He is in business development at, at Apptentive, and his presentation is going to be on how to reduce churn through active listening and proactive engagement. And finally, I will be at the end uh, talking about using back-end SDKs to drive sessions, revenues, and retention. The whole webinar is going to be about 45 minutes, give or take, and we would love to take your questions at the end. You'll notice in the GoToWebinar software that there's an area to type in your questions. So please type them in at any time. It's at the very bottom where um, I think it says chat. Just let us make, make sure to let us know if the question is for Numob, for Apptentive, for LeanPlum, or really for any of us. If you leave it blank, we'll know that it's just kind of for anybody to answer. So with that, I would like to introduce Lauren from LeanPlum. And I'm going to hey, turn it over. Thanks for the introduction, Jay. Yeah, no problem. Let me just turn it over to you. Sure. There we go. Great. All done. Fantastic. All right, yeah, thanks again for the introduction, Jay. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so as Jay mentioned, I'm Lauren Wenland, Senior Director of Customer Success at Lean Plum, and today we're going to be having a little bit of fun with our webinar, uh, Six Gifts That Explain How to Increase App Retention. So um, before I dive into it, a little bit about Lean Plum. Uh, we're an integrated mobile marketing platform built to solve your mobile engagement needs. We offer cross-channel uh, messaging and app optimization in a single solution and help brands deliver the personalized experiences that today's mobile, um, mobile users expect. We help great companies like Lyft, Zynga, and Tinder drive their customer growth, engagement, and retention. All right, so now for the fun stuff. Let's start by understanding why retention is so important. So in the U.S., the average cost per install in the early 2016s was around $2.00 but it went up to $3.34 according to uh, FixU here. The same report shows the cost per loyal user is over $4. When apps spend so much money on acquisition costs, retentions can sometimes be deprioritized. However, you'll see from the recent data why it's increasingly important to protect your acquisition investment and have a retention strategy in place. Let's look at a retention split in a few different ways. As most of you know, there's a steep drop-off after the first week when apps lose the majority of their users after the, um, after the first app open. Literally, it's a cliff. Even by day one, app retention is at 21%. In fact, Andrew Chen, a leading growth expert, reports the average app loss at 77% of the daily active users within the first three days after install. You'll see this number continues to drop to 7.5 by day 10. However, we noticed an opportunity between day 10 and day 30. 
The retention on both days was consistent. So by working to improve day 10 numbers, you can positively impact the retention of the users throughout their, um, their first month. So we divided the data in even more ways, looking at app platform, vertical, geography, user demographic, and more. But no matter how we slice the numbers, the average retention rate hovered under 5%. So instead, we decided to study how retention is affected by one key action, push notifications. We wanted to understand if sending a push notification to a user improves the retention rate. And our educated guess was yes. We found that apps can increase retention by 20% simply by sending push notifications. As you can see in the graph, retention rates are higher for apps that adopt push messaging um, versus apps that don't. In the first 30 days, the average difference between retention is 1.5%. That means apps can increase retention by 20% just by sending push notifications. Next, we decided to analyze the impact of personalizing push notifications um, had on, on retention rates, especially around timing. Specifically, the difference in retention rates between apps that send push notifications with optimal time, a, a machine learning algorithm, versus those that use their, their default time. As you can see, the average difference is 6.97% over the first 30 days. That number barely drops by day 30, and we see a steady 6.1%. That means apps can increase retention rate seven times by day 30 by sending push notifications with optimal timing. Let's illustrate what this means for a retail app like Target, uh, like Target's Cartwheel. According to the Mobile Commerce Daily, the app had more than 25 million downloads and earned over $3 billion in revenue. If Target used optimal time delivery as part of their messaging strategy, we estimate they could have earned an extra 1.75 million users. On top of that, they could earn an extra $209 million in revenue over the app's lifetime. That's pretty incredible for such an easy tactic. Finally, let's discuss opportunities to re-engage dormant users versus uninstalled. We checked out how many uninstalls, um, how many users uninstall the app and found that 23% of the first-time users uninstall the app within the first week of use. This actually creates a big opportunity. You still have 68% or two-thirds of users who are dormant that can re-engage by using push notifications. Our data shows that push notifications help retain more users, yet sending personalized push can be even more effective. So here's some common ways to personalize push messaging. Include the user's name in the message. Customize with a specific event, like shopping cart item or relevant content. Responding to individual behaviors, such as sending during certain times of the day, when users are more likely to engage. Unfortunately, if 68% of your users are dormant, you're not taking action to reactivate them, you're losing revenue every day. To wrap up, let's look at one last use case with Uber as an example. According to one source, Uber has around 8 million users and 1 million trips per day. While we don't know the average cost of each ride, let's imagine that the average ride is around $5, roughly the cost of one Uber full ride in the U.S. If Uber engages an additional 15% of dormant users, that would result in 1.1 million more in revenue per day. So to recap, by day one, apps have a 21% retention rate. By day 90, it dwindles to 1.89%. Uh, Yet 68% of users are simply dormant in the, the rest of the week, which means you have opportunities to win them back. Sending a push notification can improve retention by 20%. Apps that send notifications with optimal time see retention rates that are seven times higher. So thanks so much for your time. I'm now going to hand it over to uh, Red Resic from App Tentative to discuss how to reduce churn through active listening and proactive engagement. All right, thank you so much, Lauren, and uh, hopefully everyone out there in the interwebs can hear me. Looks like we have quite a few people, 112 plus, listening in, and a lot of you guys are really interested in retention today. So let's start by taking a deep inhale. Okay, let's exhale, and let's focus for the next 10 minutes on how we can help you breathe easy when it comes to retention over the next X amount of years you're at your company and your career altogether. So for starters, I have a very simple agenda. 
We're going to help you understand what your customers expect from you based on what we've learned from our customers. We're going to show you some engagement strategies that will help you listen to your customers, and most importantly, tactics to improve retention. And if you're extra special and we make it to the end, I'll give you some tips and secrets we've learned about Apple's 10.3 release and how that's going to have a huge impact on retention. And if you didn't know about Apple's 10.3 release, well, then I would change your tab to this screen right now or at least in the next six minutes. So let's start. What is Apptentive? Everything that you just heard from Lean Plum was fantastic, but we have a very different approach that I think will complement them, like catch up to your mustard. We focus on the last mile of customer interactions, which is not push, but it's the conversation that pulls them into your brand. It's the reason you choose to be a brander for life. It's not that push that got you to be with them. It's them being there for you when you needed them the most. So we work with some of the world's biggest brands. We continue to grow. And I have the pleasure of being there since the very beginning when we started our sales process. And I'm going to share everything I've learned over the past four years. Now, for the first thing, you need to understand what your customers expect of you before you can tell them or push them to do anything. Number one, you got to build trust, and their expectations are ridiculously high. They expect two things in this generation. One, when they open the app, it must be personalized to them. So if they're opening a shopping app and suddenly you're promoting women's clothing and they're a guy, well, that's not going to work. There's enough data out there that should show when you deep link them in, they need to see what they were looking for. Number two, it needs to work fast. Otherwise, they can be on the web. Why do they need this app? What's different? What is the app going to do for them to tie into their mobile wallet to help them pay on time? So immediacy is very important, but guess what? You can't be perfect. Apps crash. Apps have issues, and you can't always have the product that your customers expect. So the big issue that you need to take a screenshot of this right now, this isn't our data. This is public data. You need to take a screenshot if you're browsing the web right now. Customers do not think you're listening to them. There's a reason app stores, Yelp, social media exists. It's because customers don't know where else to go when your app is not delivering on their expectations. This is a big issue if 68% of them don't think you actually care. Because the problem is, while 68% don't think you care, 96% of your customers will never complain. You think about retention, here's the issue. You're going to lose 91% of your customers. Okay, It's just going to happen. It's an industry standard. You're, they're going to be gone after three months to six months. And yet 96% of them are never, ever, ever going to complain to you. Think about that double standard. 68% don't think you listen, yet 96% don't ever, ever complain. So how do you deal with this? What do we do now? Another inhale, another exhale. Here's the solution. You've got to unlock, unlock the customer feedback. We have a term we use. You can steal this term. It's not trademark. All of our customers use this now. It's called the silent majority. 99.5% of your customers will never, ever leave a comment, answer a survey, take a survey, be in a focus group, or give you feedback everywhere. Literally, if you're focused on your ratings in the App Store, those one-star ratings, they are practically meaningless compared to the volume of feedback that is waiting for you in your app. If you unlock these customers who never, ever give you feedback and you find a way to get them to talk to you, guess what happens next? You move that bell curve to the right. More customers are going to stay in the app because they are confident you're listening. They're going to give you the five-star ratings you want them to give you, and they're going to spend more time and money with your brand, all because you spend time listening to them. It's the basis of every loving relationship, and we hope that you can learn these specific steps to doing that. Let's start by pre-qualifying the customer. Do not prompt customers unless you understand whether or not they are happy with your product overall. So first thing you want to do is understand this is a very simple tactic. Do they love you or not? You've seen this before, and it works very well. Because if you know they love you, find out why and promote that. If you're a marketer, figure out that little keyword and just put it into your SO strategy or promote it on Facebook. If you're a product person, find out what the trending issues are. And then follow up with those customers that do love you and give them early access to new features. You want to talk about retention? They want to feel exclusive. These are your early adopters. Give them what they want and give them a chance to give you feedback. You'll be blown away by the volume at which they tell you about how they feel about your product. And for everybody else that doesn't love you, don't send them to the app store. Would you kick your customer out of your store to give you feedback outside on the sidewalk? Then why would you do that in your app? This is the easiest. I'm telling you right now, you want to see 5 to 20% re lift and retention? Keep your customers in the app when they need to tell you something. I'll show you more. So here's a couple of app engagement strategies, and I think Newmob's going to do a good job of showing you why this is important. First off, 
real-time in-app communication when something goes wrong. If you have a crash, if the video is not loading, or if you know that they were in shopping cart and it crashed. That is the worst feeling in the world when I lose my shopping cart, especially if I'm not logged in. Okay? You need to be able to have something that apologizes to them when that thing goes wrong. Because they're not going to pick up the phone, they're not going to go to the app store, and they're not going to use your app. You just lost a customer because you didn't tell them, sorry about that experience, we're working on it. This works especially well, by the way, during the holiday season when you have like a maintenance mode. So I know it's a little early for Black Friday, but if you don't have something like this in place by Thanksgiving, you're missing out on huge revenue and especially retention as we go into Christmas. Okay, if you're still with me, there's one thing you need to hear and take a screenshot of this screen, okay? You saw what Lean Plum said about push helping you with lifts and retention. This is the other mustard to that catch up. This is the important thing you need to remember. Get off that tab and look at this screen. If you interact with your customers, if you actually take the time and let them vent to you privately in the app, three months from now, they're four times as likely to use it. We announced this data two years ago at Mobile World Congress. Our biggest customers are continuing to use us till this day because of this simple insight. If you give your customers a chance to talk to you and you listen to them, you will see huge lifts in retention. Screenshot over and out, and you'll get this when this webinar is done. Now let's give you some quick tips that you can go tomorrow and start doing. It's called active listening, right? It's being proactive with your customers. You've got a couple easy ways you can do this. Number one is a help button in your app. Overstock does a great job of this because they're a mobile first company. They don't want the overhead of phone calls that cost $17 a call. If there's something going on in their app, they have a button that they can get feedback from customers right inside the app. Again, would you kick your customer out of your store to make you give feedback outside? That's retention lost. The more you can get them to use your app to even give you feedback, the more customers will stay in your app. It's an easy KPI fixer, I'm telling you. Easiest win. Next is proactive feedback. Everyone likes to say, oh, I don't fill out surveys, I don't love them. You're the 0.5%. The other 99.5%, our data continues to show they want these surveys, especially if they're at the right place in time after their shopping experience. Nothing's worse than getting an email a week after your stay at a hotel when you could have just asked it right when they booked it or wait when they checked in for the first time with their mobile key. These are things our customers are doing. If you want to learn more, it's very easy. This will make it very simple for your customer's event and for you to get feedback. Now, how does this all tie into 10.3? Very, very simple. There are three things you need to remember when your boss, your manager, yourself, or your engineers ask you what's going on with 10.3. Number one, you're at the mercy of being prompted and giving feedback inside the app. That means your customers will never have to leave your app to give you feedback. They can do it right inside the experience. That sounds great, right? Well, not really, because you only get three shots at that in the year. And if you ask that, if you ask them at the wrong place and at the wrong time, especially after a crash, goodbye. That's a one star. That's a two star. And you have no way to prevent it. And of course, you always have the chance to respond. But that response to that customer is still public. That means the customer publicly told the world you're a one star app when it wasn't really a one star app. But when you use it right, this is when you'll see success. And here's a good example of how Nordstrom would do this and other retailers are doing this today and how they're preparing for 10.3. Number one, do you love Nordstrom? If you don't, give them another chance to not give that feedback publicly. Again, with unstructured feedback, you can analyze later for keywords or structured feedback like surveys, which make it easy to analyze. On the other hand, if they do love you, don't ask them prompt you right away. Don't ask for a rating right away. You know they love you. So later on, give them a chance to follow up. And at that point, you would say, do you love Nordstrom? That's perfect. You've already pre-qualified them. Your goal isn't the rating. It's to find out if they love your app first, retain them. And then the only time you should ever send them out of your app is when you're darn sure they're going to be a five star. This works well for improving everything you need. So here's what we're going to do to relearn everything we just did in the past seven minutes. Number one, be proactive. If you brace yourself for being proactive, I guarantee you'll have happier customers. Retention will go up. Number two, you need to work on timing in the app, especially with 10.3. If you don't know the right place in time, they're going to turn off any chance that you'll ever be able to ask them for rating ever. This is some examples of what not to do. Don't interrupt their experience, especially if they're in the middle of a calculation asking them to rate. Do not ask them to fill out a survey that no one will fill out inside the app. Oh, we're going to email you or text you later a 30-question survey. It's great on the web. It's not meant for mobile. 
And finally, do not use QD emojis and look desperate. I get it if you're a one-time entrepreneur creating a brand new app, but it just doesn't convert well. There's better ways to time it out. What you can do is what I showed you, pre-qualify customers. Give them a chance in the app to actually tell you how they feel at any point in time. And finally, once you know they love you, that is the only time you should ever kick them out of your app because you know they're gonna come crawling back for more because they love your brand. If you wanna learn more about this, we have a lot of resources on attentive.com forward slash resources. And we have an entire team that loves you. This is our customer love week. It's part of why we're doing this. Happy post Valentine's. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Jay and I look forward to any questions you might have about what you saw today. Thank you. Awesome, thank you very much, Red. That was great. And uh, I liked how you were in the center of the, the circle of love there. <laughs> um, okay, so let me just maximize my screen here. All right, so this is Jay Hinman. I am the VP of Marketing at Numob, and thanks so much to Red and Lauren for the presentations thus far. I'm, I'm going to take a slightly different tack, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the underlying plumbing within mobile apps, but not in a boring way. Don't, don't worry. Um, I'm going to talk about what a major impact paying attention to that actually has on app sessions, app revenues, and app retention. So first, it's kind of important to re review kind of what we usually talk about when we talk about retention. Focus for, for retention is typically, and I believe rightfully, placed on the app's front end, the stuff that is actually visible to users, you know, everything on the screen itself. And this can be endlessly tweaked and optimized, and obviously tools from Lean Plum and Apptentive can make a huge difference here. Um, product designers and managers and marketers are constantly asking themselves, how do I make my app more exciting, sticky, personal, and relevant enough to earn a place on millions of smartphones, and, and obviously to keep it there? So they use exceptionally effective tools like push notifications and A-B testing and UI personalization and customer service tools, in-app communication that we just learned about, and services that are essential to, really to any retention plan. These same app owners and product managers are often ignoring their apps plumbing, though, with all of the attention on front-end tools. This focus on the app's fashion, quote-unquote, as opposed to its function, quote-unquote, uh, can come with a real app performance cost. Slow speeds, slow load times, app errors, crashes, and timeouts, they're really all symptoms of not focusing here, and they're each quite deadly in their own way. It really calls for a focus on what's hurting app performance, and often that's the proliferation of third-party calls that are built into an app. And these are important third-party calls, you know, the content feeds and the ad networks and the images and the SDKs and, and all the other calls that can actually have a major impact on app performance, but you still want to keep them within your app. So the silent majority notwithstanding, you know, it's often said that users only take to app stores to write bad reviews when a feature they love is removed from an app or when the app itself doesn't work. So errors, timeouts, and crashes are the number one example of the latter. You know, just go, just for fun, just go into an app's ratings uh, in the app store or on Google Play and take a look at the one-star comments. We do this all the time. It's a, it's, it's a blast. I've left a few up here from a nameless app that has probably the worst rating I've ever seen anywhere. And you can see that, um, obviously, we cherry-picked some of the comments, but over and over, it was about the app's performance. It's slow. It crashes. It doesn't work when I need it to. What happened? Et cetera, et cetera. App errors are essentially things that don't show up. You know, sometimes you'll, you'll get everything on the page except for one image, or you'll even get a blank spot where an ad should be, which obviously isn't always the worst thing in the world, but for a brand, it means they don't get paid. Or a content feed will show an error instead of the requested content. Or worse, uh, as Red mentioned, a purchase will fail, which is pretty much the worst thing ever. Um, a timeout in an app is, is an app that just kind of freezes or hangs, and it won't proceed to the next inter interaction. And of course, a crash is a complete shutdown of the app. So with regard to these errors, this is something that we in Numo, at Numob track very closely for our customers. They vary within a given app from anywhere up between 3 and 12%. And this is really highly variable, and it's dependent on network conditions. We found that a country that has great 4G coverage, like most of the United States, will typically see about 3% errors within apps. But slower networks in China and India and Latin America, they have up to 12% in-app errors, which makes really for a pretty miserable user experience. But errors really are only part of the story. Speed is also crucial to mobile app consumers and to retaining them. And you can see that Dimension Research did a pretty comprehensive study of mobile app users. 
and they found that a third of mobile app users just simply stop using an app that they perceive as slow. 48% uh, of them just flat out uninstall or remove the slow app entirely, and then 32% then go on to look for an alternative, and that's probably a competitor's app, which is exactly what you don't want. Um, Apptelligent and we here at Numob have also uncovered some pretty illuminating statistics. Um, Apptelligent did a great study in 2016 that shows that most app users now expect their apps to load in two seconds or less, but they also found, because they can measure these things, that 46% of iOS Apple apps actually did this and 53% of Android apps did, which really leaves a lot of room for improvement for kind of a near majority of apps. And we at Numob just did a st uh, study a couple months ago, and we found that nearly 75% of consumers confirmed that they had deleted an app from their smartphones simply due to slow load times, crashes, errors, or slow in-app performance, which is not surprising at all. So those are kind of the scary stats, but here are some nice ones. Uh, Localytics did a recent study that showed a direct connection between app sessions and app retention. So 22% of app downloads result in on only one use of the app ever, but 39% come back for 11 or more sessions. Those users that, users that come back five or more times during that first month are 50% more likely to be a customer several months down the line than those who use it only twice. For us at Numob, we actually had a great recent case study with a leading real-time news app, who I'm going to guess that everybody here has heard of. Um, when they integrated our App Acceleration SDK, their app load time went up by an average of 80% and faster than that in some markets. So their error rate also dropped from a global average of 5% to 1%. And the best news of all is this was directly correlated to a 9% increase in app sessions. And as we know, more time in the app means a much greater likelihood to keep it month after month and, of course, to buy things or view more ads or whatever your, your monetization metric happens to be. So a different app, it's a tier one app that's focused on travel bookings, they saw a really strong increase in speed across multiple countries. As you can see here, they were 103% faster in Germany with the Numob SDK turned on than with it turned off, and 82% faster in India with it turned on versus with it turned off. And this is something we can easily measure within our platform. So for a travel or a commerce app in particular, those gains have some really great business KPI impacts. A faster time to check out or to book travel means that there's less time to be distracted by something else on the phone and abandon your shopping cart. Faster app speeds overall means stronger app brand loyalty, and it means an increased desire to use the app to book travel or to buy something next time. Uh, giving customers an easier and faster path to check out means more windows to increase your page views, potentially add transactions if the friction from a slow or error-filled app is removed. And finally, this leads to better app store reviews, right, which leads to more app downloads and to higher revenues. So here's my checklist to you when you think about your back end to add retention tools to your app's back end and not merely to its front end. First, make sure that you've got a great analytics SDK installed that lets you measure everything that's going on in your app, not just the marketing stuff, but the performance metrics as well. If you're not measuring app speed and load times, this is probably a good time to start. Uh, many apps have an SDK that look at crashes, which is great, things like Crashlytics and Apptelligent, these are essential, but also make sure that you're looking at network errors and timeouts since they're nearly as annoying and frustrating to your users. Uh, make sure that you're studying how your app performs in various countries. Don't just focus on the country that you live in. So focus on where your customers actually are, not just where you happen to be. And if you can, isolate the speeds of the third-party URLs, ads, SDKs, etc. Numob's SDK can help you see this. And finally, once you're measuring all this stuff, make sure you fix it so you can be among the brands or apps that are actually keeping the users that you work so hard to acquire. With that, I thank you, and now we're going to move on to your questions. We've saved some time here at the end for these, so if you haven't asked yours yet, just type it into the questions portion of the GoToWebinar software, not the chat part, as I said earlier. And make sure to let us know if the question is for Numob, for Aptenev, for Lean Plum, or really just for any of us. And I'm going to do this and get over to the questions and see what you've been asking while we've been talking here. All right, so we have two questions so far. I'll start with one directly for Lean Plum from Amara Bell. Lean Plum, how many sessions does it take to understand a user's optimal time? Do you have that data on day one? Yep. Um, 
Thanks for the question. Yep, so the way that we calculate our optimal time is just like you said, it's based off of the user session information um, so that we can calculate it based off of um, as soon as one session. Um, so if the user has been in one time and one time only, we'll look at when they started their session, the duration of the ses session, and calculate optimal time based on that. If they have multiple subsequent sessions, we'll actually take into consideration all of those sessions and figure out um, when would be the best time looking at each one of those. Excellent, thank you. We have uh, one other question. Um, it's, it's a general one. And it's, how have you seen iMessage integration affect app retention? I don't have a clean answer for this, so I will leave it to, to Red and to Lauren if you, if you know. Um, I'm happy to jump in. Um, so the question is a little unclear in terms of the iMessage. Um, if, if I do believe you're asking the question is really about chat integrations with like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp in terms of that model. Um, in terms of giving people a place they can go for com continuing the conversation. We have seen no data that suggests that does anything to really lift, but there are a couple companies that are really expert in this. I would happily refer you to if you reach out to me privately. Um, I'm happy to make some recommendations based on some conferences and people I've talked to about this. On the other end, if you're not referring specifically to that model and you're actually referring to something that I didn't address, um, again, still happy if you want to continue to ask the question again and re-clarify. I think that's that's it. Those are the questions that we have. So we were able to keep this actually under 45 minutes, which is great. I hope that was helpful for everybody. Uh, thanks very much to Red, to Lauren for uh, speaking. Go follow every everybody on Twitter and the various social media platforms. And uh, we'll be doing other webinars as well. So this one's being recorded. Like I said, it should be available on our various uh, pages not too long from now. And thanks for, again very much for attending today. Thanks, Chad. Thank Good morning. Bye. Bye.